Welcome to a very special edition of The Gospel Truth. Uh, today, I'm going to interview some of my good friends, Robert and Elizabeth Murin, and I also have my wife, Jamie, on set with us, which uh, I guess, I, I think this is the very first time she's ever been on my television program. She's been on a couple of things that we've done and put on our website, but this is just a miracle. So you're going to get to see my wife, Jamie, and we are interviewing Robert and Elizabeth Murin. And this couple, you are going to be blessed when you hear this. Uh, we did some things to put on our website with them. We got through a little bit early. And I said, just start the cameras rolling. And I sat down and began to ask what their testimony is. And I don't know how to introduce this any better than to say you just need to listen to it because it is one of the most miraculous testimonies that I've ever heard, especially Elizabeth. God has had her his hand on her since she was a little girl, and um, it is amazing. They are from, uh, she was born in Honduras. Robert is from Norway, and they have moved from Norway now. They are a part of our Caris Bible College, and they are helping lead the artistic uh, creative school of Caris Bible College. We've put on some special productions. We'll be making an offer at the end of this, and we'll be giving some samples. They're going to be here today, and then also tomorrow and Friday, and we're going to be playing some of the performances that we have given at the barn up in Woodland Park and I tell you, you're going to be blessed. You don't want to miss this, so watch this. At the end, I'll come back and share a little bit more with you. Today, we have a real privilege. I've got Jamie with me here on the set and also Robert and Elizabeth Murin. They're a couple that uh, I met when they first lived in Norway. Now, Elizabeth, you are, what is your nationality? I am half Norwegian, half Cuban. Half Norwegian, half Cuban. Robert is full Norwegian. Viking. Viking. <laughs> and anyway... Uh, they are just awesome. And they are now living in Woodland Park at our Karis Bible College, uh, right there just next to the campus. And they are a part of our creative arts school. It is miraculous. And there are just so many miracles associated with you guys that Jamie and I thought it would be great to just get some of this on video and share with people about what God has done in your life. We are just so blessed to have you as friends and to have you here as a part of this. And, and uh, so we want you just to share some of your story. I don't know how we get started on this. I know that uh, Elizabeth always starts about when you're five years old. <laughs> <laughs> and well, you got to remember that we've said some of these on previous deals, but this is a mm -hmm. unique thing and people watching may have never heard your story before. So. Let's start with you, Elizabeth. How, how did your relationship with God get started? Well, my parents were missionaries. My mom, Norwegian, my father, Cuban, and I was born in Honduras. And um, I went to Sunday school one day, and they said, if you speak to God, God will speak back to you. I took that so serious. I was so excited. I went to my room. I put the bed cover over my head. I closed my eyes, and I said, God, I'm here. Speak to me. In my mind, I saw this red carpet and me running on it and two big hands that picked me up. And uh, it was just so r real experience for me. And I remember asking God all these different questions. Am I going to get married? How many children am I going to have? Am I going to have long hair when I grow up? Every important question every woman has to ask. And, <laughs> and then I asked God, so what am I going to do when I grow up? And then the answer I received is, one day you will reach the stars. And uh, I got a glimpse right there of me and my life. I saw myself singing and preaching millions of people. Uh, I saw films, I saw the musicals. I, and um, the day after I told my mother, mom, one day I will reach the star and I will be singing and I will. And my mom was listening to me thinking, oh man, <laughs> those are big dreams. And, um, Did she encourage you or discourage you? Or? Well, um, no, she listened. And of course, she thought it was very overwhelming, you know. And especially as I was growing up, I was very, very shy. I had no talents. You know, when I was seven years old, they threw me out of choir because I was messing up 
and I was ruining for the others. Wow. And uh, in, at school, I was uh, half blind and no one had noticed it, uh, so I couldn't see. So I would sit in the back just copying what the others were doing, uh, usually not answering because I couldn't see. So um, at one point, they even took me to have a test to, to see if I was totally developed and <laughs> <laughs> or if I had a syndrome of any kind. Um, and I was uh, a, te a very, very shy teenage, very shy. And I remember that I always thought, okay, so one day I will be like Cinderella. One day God will come and maybe it's going to be in a prayer meeting that someone will lay their hands on me and I will go from Cinderella to the princess that God, that showed me when I was five. Mm -hmm. So I would always go, you know, to be prayed for because I was, I couldn't look people in the eyes. And I just, uh, my mom usually, my mom would say, oh, what is it going to be of this child? She just has nothing for her, you know? I couldn't speak. I was not funny. I was just... You know, for the people watching this, <clears throat> let me just interject. You hadn't seen Elizabeth, but man, she can sing. She can act. She has favor like basically no one, Jamie and she's I have ever... Funny now. <laughs> and I mean, what she's oh, describing man. now is the opposite <clears throat> yeah. of the way you are. So what happened? You know, I re uh, there was a woman in our church her name uh, in Spanish is Esperanza, that means hope. Mm -hmm. And every Thursday night there were prayer meetings and she would jump in the same moment in the meeting, she would jump and pray this beautiful prayer. Lord, here I am, use me, please. Hello, I'm here, I really want to serve you. And, and then she asked the worship team to sing a song that is Jesus, here I am, send me. So the day Esperanza died, and we were in the burial place. They started singing, Jesus, here I am, send me. I thought that was so bad. And, you know, I panicked because I thought, oh my, God forgot her. What if he forgets me? What if he never gives me the talents that I need to do what I'm supposed to do? I went home and I closed the door and I went under the bed cover and I just said, you cannot forget me. And I started complaining about everything I didn't have, about how talentless, shy. Well, I really went for it. I was swimming in the pool of pitiness. <laughs> and, um, and then the Lord spoke and he said to me, are you done complaining? Are you done? And I said, well, I, I do have a reason. You really, really forgot me. <laughs> and then he said to me, Elizabeth, did I forget to give you hands? I thought I had given you hands. Do you know how many things you can do with those hands? Did I forget to give you eyes? Did I forget to give you ears? Wow, you can hear and listen when people need help. Did I forget to give you head? And I remember uh, hearing him say, head is not only to hold your hair, it's to think, to create. <laughs> and then he said, I've given you a heart the most powerful tool. You can love people. And then he said, and I have given you my spirit and he will help you with everything you cannot do. And I, at that moment, 14 year old, I realized that, wow, I already got everything I need within me. I already got it. I have within me the small seeds I just need to use the little I have. And I somehow, 14 year old, I understood the free will. I understood how God has put within me everything, but it's up to me. If I am faithful in the little, he will, you know, it will grow and it will develop. So from that day, I really started, stopped complaining and I used the free will that God gave me. I started working, you know, to look people in the eyes. I started singing and rehearsing. I started, you know, really working with the little I had. And, and um, when I was 18, I had an encounter with the Holy Spirit. That really, really ch did something with me. I was on my way to Honduras uh, to work as a missionary. <clears throat> and I remember reading the Bible and feeling so jealous. I was jealous about the disciples because, you know, when Peter walked, his shadow healed the sick. No one was getting healed <laughs> by my shadow. And I just felt that there was something missing in my life. So I went into my room again under the bed cover and I just said, okay, I ain't leaving this room 
until I understand what, what am I missing. And uh, I stayed there for many days. And um, then I realized, uh, and the, the Lord really showed me how I knew Jesus and how I understood the Father and His love, but I didn't know who the Holy Spirit was. And oh man, when I realized who the Holy Spirit is and what He is here for, and that He is there for me to teach me, to guide me, to be my friend, I just had the most amazing experience. And you know, the Holy Spirit said to me, uh, your expectation to me is the room you give me in your life. So whatever you, you expect from me each day, that's the room I have to work with you. So I was lost. You know, for two years, I was lost. I went around talking to him. I experienced the most amazing things. Um, and he really changed me totally. He did. Wow. That's awesome. <laughs> Robert, share with us where you're coming from. Yeah, well, I'm only Norwegian, <laughs> as she said, but uh, we, um, we both met at a Bible school in Norway. I was there uh, to teach. I was teaching sports and music and stuff like this in a Christian school, like a boarding school for 19-year-olds. Um, and then Elizabeth came. She had already been there a year, but uh, we met for the first time there. And I come from a Christian home, born and raised in the church, on the platform, all of these things, and knowing God all my life. But, you know, meeting Elizabeth opened up a new dimension in my life in every way. To meet her and get to know her, her stories, her life, her heart, her work with God, totally new dimension. But uh, so we, we worked there together for four years and we got married. And we then moved to Israel. Because uh, Elizabeth, as part of a story she didn't tell so far, but she had a clear calling on her life as a young girl and that was leading her to Israel. And that followed her through her youth, her childhood and her youth. And she had some questions sometimes. Was this just like a childhood, like some kind of romantic dream of something? But God would just confirm it again and again and again in the most amazing ways. So, so that was part of the package in a sense. So when we got married, we quit our jobs and we put everything we had into a big car and we drove our car from Norway to Jerusalem. Wow, but that was an experience that in itself. That was quite an experience. It was a great trip, it was a road trip. 11 days through Europe and south and then boat uh, east in the Mediterranean, arriving in Israel. And that was special. So we had, uh, we lived in Israel for nine years, and that was amazing. To live in Jerusalem, I, I, there were, it was years until I felt like a normal day, because it was just super exciting every day. Um, but in Israel, we, we wanted to find a way to communicate the Word of God to the Jewish people. And there was a lot of sensitivity, a lot of hurt a lot of you know issues um, jewish christian conflict stuff and historical tragedies but we just wanted to find a way that would open up their eyes so we started writing a story their story writing their own history and showing how god has been faithful to them throughout all of the things in the bible even though it's conflict and it's ups and downs god was always faithful and then this story leads onward, includes Jesus in the middle there, continues through modern times and up until today. So the audience eventually sitting in the hall was the continuation of this story. And the message was that God has not forgotten you. He is faithful even today, just as he was throughout the whole history. So we started with big dreams and how to get this and do this, but we had nothing. We had no resources, we knew no people. But we, we just go for it. And then, you know, God really provides. So from starting there, we, we wrote this story, borrowed a few money to get some soundtrack going, and it really fleshed out to become a performance. So the covenant, the story of the, of the Jewish people, became a real musical production, and we toured around Israel and in Europe and in the States. 
and performed it for more than 100 and maybe 50,000 people. So what kind of response did you get <coughs> touring in Israel showing this? It was amazing. Um, it's, uh, there's a lot of skepticism because we travel, we, we produced this together with the International Christian Organization and uh, we did it first in English only. And um, well, a little bit skepticism, but really God opened doors to move this further on. We got a translator on board who we didn't know anything about him, but the first time we met him, we sat down on a street cafe in Tel Aviv and, and talked about this and got to know him a little bit. And it just dawned on us that this guy is just something really special. So after having that meeting that day, we went home and, and Googled him up on the internet. And we found that he was probably the most iconic cultural personality in the modern Israel history. Hmm. He had written lyrics to more than a thousand songs. And many of them are like Israeli folkloristic, you know, national treasures today. And he had radio programs, TV programs, all kinds of things. And he had even received the State of Israel's highest price for his lifetime achievement. It was given to him in, in front of the whole official state, the Supreme Court justices, the president, all of these things. So suddenly this person comes into our journey and he hears the covenant and he says, I want to help you. So he translated our production to Hebrew. And with his name on the poster and the quality all of this uh, gave, we traveled all around the country and performed in Hebrew for tens of thousands of people. And people were crying, laughing. It was just an amazing, amazing response. Well, you won't know till you get to heaven what kind of results <laughs> that has. You sowed seeds that you probably never get to see the exact fruit. Yes. It's awesome. Yes. So uh, you performed not only in Israel, but you went in around uh, to other countries. So how long did you do this? Over a period of maybe seven years total, we had seasons of touring. And um, we did it both in English and in Spanish even, and also in Hebrew. How many languages do you all speak? I always say more. There are a few. <laughs> Four or five, something, yeah. Yeah. more or less. Fluent. Not fluent, but yeah. uh, fluent. We, can, like, we can order pizza. <laughs> <laughs> in English, I can order pizza. But you know, to see the response, you know, to see how this affects people was amazing. You know, uh, it, that was, you know, part of the dream when God said one day you will reach the stars I was uh, seven years old when the Lord showed me that he wanted me to go to Israel uh, Nikki Cruz was praying for me and as he was praying for me I saw the flag of Israel I didn't know at that time it was Israel's flag I thought it was my own so I was started drawing it everywhere Elizabeth's flag until one day my father said do you know which country it belongs to and I said no I made it up it's mine no that's the flag of Israel Wow. So I always knew that, okay, so there is where he wants me to go. When we came to Israel, as he said, we wanted to find what is the most effective way of reaching out with the word of God to Israel. How can we put a banner that is so tall and high that most people can see it? And there is where I really feel so uh, passionate about finding effective ways, you know, using the creativity and, and that God has given us to reach out um, so, so our dream, it, we had this little apartment. I remember the living room had not even windows. <laughs> uh, and, and there we were dreaming this huge musical that w was going to be able to impact the nation of Israel today when we had zero money. And, and, but you know, um, it happened. We were able to be in the biggest theaters across the country. It was one woman that after seeing the change in her daughter, uh, this young girl, beautiful, Hadassa, long hair, she looked like a Queen Esther. She was sitting there in one of our performance with hundreds of Israeli soldiers uh, that, that we had been able to bring in to the theater. And she was sitting there, she was an atheist, she didn't believe in God, she couldn't understand why the Jewish people had chosen to live am you know, among all their, their enemies. So she was dreaming of moving to America, to United States. So there she was, uh, and she's, here, she's watching this musical about the story of Israel, that it's just, you know, the Bible opening up before them. She started crying from God says Abraham. 
And she cried through the whole thing. And when it was done, she called and said, Mom, I believe. Mm. I believe in God. That's I believe awesome. in the Bible. Uh, she, so the mother jumped on a car to come and see what has changed my daughter. The mother experienced the same as tens of thousands of Israelis. So the mother came to us and she said, I want to use one year of my life and I I need to make the whole Israel see this. And this Jewish woman said, I believe this musical is what will turn our, our hearts back to our God. So this woman, she went from municipality to municipality, from mayor to mayor, and she was forcing these guys mm -hmm. <laughs> to bring us to the biggest theater so that they could bring all the schools and all the military. It was amazing how God opened doors. And, you know, many of the Christian leaders that have been working there for tons of years, they said that this is the covenant, is what has impacted Israel in the last, you know, since Jesus with the word of God the most. And wow. it was really awesome. According to the law of Moses, she deserves to die. So let him among you who is without sin, let him throw the first stone. Come with your pain, let him come. I'm unworthy, but I trust in your word. You know who I am. Still, you call me by name from now and forever. I will never be the same. I will find. I know that that blessed you. I tell you, it is amazing what God is doing in this couple's life, and it's such a blessing to have them now a part of our ministry, and it's just a God connection. We do have some product from a recent performance that we did of God with us, and this is a musical that was written by Robert and Elizabeth, and it was produced professionally. Uh, it is going to be awesome. We will be playing it on our television program probably around Christmas time, and so we don't have the product finished yet, but we are offering a pre-release sale on this product. You can go ahead and order it right now, but I promise you it would be a blessing. So I encourage you to call or write today and get these materials.